Hi, I'm Lassie and I'm teaching people in metal shaping and uh, I'm back here with the second part of the cab corner for the 35-36 Ford uh, pickup. So I'm going to show you how to finish this piece up and then you have the part one and part two and you can make this pieces if you want or you can use the same apply the same technique to many different panels as well. So I hope you're going to learn from it. Behind me here, or on the right side here, I have my 32.5 window coupe that I'm restoring an old Henry Ford body for myself. And it's all started with the American Graffiti movie in Sweden a long time ago. So this one I have been working on for many years, but I'm getting there. And behind me here is the 33 ropes that you saw a picture of in the, in the last video clip as well. So. Let's go over to the table and uh, do some measurement there and then I can start to uh, use the bead roller for this. So I'm going to show you a few things here on the table first and uh, here's the piece that I made before and here's the piece that I have shown you on the video that, we, that I did last time. The thing that I'm going to do different here on this is um, see the, the flange here and I bent that with the radius die immediately that has a radius and I'm going to show you the close-up of that on the in the bead roller but it's a little tricky to get this width of the bead exactly the same width so I'm going to do a close-up here now so I can show you what, what I'm going to explain for you so you can see it a little better so what I said uh, yeah, was that when I made this one, I used a radius die like this to, to round this one up. But it's very difficult to, to keep this bead parallel. It's easy to get this little wider, a little more narrow, a little wider and so on when I do that. So I found out a little trick to do in the bead roller so I can keep it more consistent and then I can make it round. So I'm going to bend this flange in the bean roller just 90 degrees with just a little radius die on the inside. And I can use the guide for most part of this in the, in the bead roller. After I have done that, then I have shrunk this part here because this part is, is too long. So when I fold this in, I need to shrink this to get this curve back. But after I have done that, this will be too sharp. Then I can run another set of dies and make this round after. And I think that's what I'm going to do now and see what the result I'm going to get from that. <clears throat> so first thing to do is I need to measure inside of this one here. So I can see what that is. And then I can set this one at the same on this one. And then I can set the, 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 um, the caliper here and I can scribe that part there. Then I see where this is going to be continue. And I can set the caliper on that one and I can scribe that there because this one will be by freehand. This will be difficult to do uh, with the guide because it's so sharp curve here. This one here, I can measure that one and scribe that as well. And this one I can use the guide at least to 45 degrees, maybe a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me set up the bead roller and uh, go over to that one and run that. So I'm over here at the bead roller and uh, here's the die that I picked to, to use for this uh, flange. I'm using a flat narrow one and then uh, one of the flame dies that I call the flame dies, but has a shoulder so I can use this as a guide. And sometimes if the, the inner curve is not too sharp, I can use this all the way. But uh, we have a little, little different uh, case here. so. Uh, and then I'm using a, a flat die here as a spacer. 
So it's only this part here, those two first ones that I'm actually using. And on the top one, I picked a, a die that has a little radius to it. I don't want to have a sharp one because then I'm going to get marks on the outside of the panel that we that I'm making. And with my bead roller, I can adjust up the shaft in and out one and a half inch on the first generation, two inches on the second generation, which means that I can set this die here anywhere on this surface. And if I need to have a wider flange, I can put this die here, I can put that, so I have two of them in the front here, so that I can have a flange that is, is twice like this. So I'm going to run it against the camera there so you can see what comes out there, but pay attention to where it goes there to the guide there. So I'm going to do the first part of this one now because this is the same width. This will be different and I think I'm going to use that, um, do this by freehand. This one, I need to set the die here, uh, adjust the machine so I can set it in a different measure compared to the first one. When I do something like that, I turn this down so it's touching and then I do a little bit more. And I pay attention on the side that goes into the machine. Always stay so you see what's going on on the side that goes into the machine. Let's see here if I can. Maybe, it, maybe it's better to keep going here now and follow the red line. Slow down the speed a little bit on the speed control. So that's what it looks like after the first run. And you need to do this in several steps. So next time now I'm lifting this up a little bit more. But when I do it this way, then I can get this flange exactly the same width. And the bead on the outside here will be parallel. So that's what it looks like after the second run. So I guess it's this going to be the last one. So now I'm up all the way with the die or the metal up to the die. The flange there is so narrow in the inner curve there so we will see if I can get that to work without stretching it. So here you can see now, if you see it from the camera there, you can see that this is pretty much straight. And it is because this flange is more narrow than here. If this flange had been the same width all the way here, then I must stretch this, but it's so narrow now, so it, it works anyway. So now I need to set the machine different for the, this curve here, and uh, I will do that and get back. So now I have adjusted the upper shaft a little further in, so I have the, the same measurement here from this uh, guide to the red line. So now I can hold it against the guide and I can run that at least to 45 degrees and then we will see what, what I need to do. So here it's because this flange 
is, is touching there, I can go backwards there, the first part there, to, to bend that back a little bit. Now I can start every time, I can start there in the corner. I could take the hammer and the dolly and, and bend it too, but the camera I was running, so... <laughs> So I do the same thing here, I'm lifting it up a little bit, probably three or four times until I get it up to, to 90, but I need to do something already now I see. So here you can see that this is start getting wavy. That means that when I bend this flange, it it's, needs to be shorter. It's too long if I continue to bend it. It's going to be wrinkle all over. So what I need to do now is I need to go over to the shrinker and make that little shorter. So let's do that. Move the camera over there so we can do that. So I'm over to the deep shrinker and stretcher. Um, I prefer to use the deep one here because the jaws open up a little bit more. You can see immediately here now when I'm when I'm shrinking this, it actually bends it a little bit more too. So we will see if I need to bend it more or if I should do use the sandbag and the hammer and the dolly. That's what it looks like there now. So I think I, I don't think I can do anything more in the bead roller. Maybe I can run it one more time in the bead roller. So I'm back to the bead roller here and I'm going to run it one more time to see if I can bend it a little more 90 degrees. You see that I switched the camera over to the other side. It doesn't matter which side you're feeding the metal in as long as you're standing on the side where you're feeding it in, then you have control over what you do in the bead roll. If I'm standing on the side that comes out from the bead roll and see this side that comes out, I don't have control. So keep that in mind. And I think I mentioned that in other videos as well. There we go. I think it, it came out good. Then I need to take the little hammer and dolly or a plier and bend that. But other than that, yeah, I think that's, that's what I'm looking for. So let's do little adjustments. Um, you know, I think I'm going to run the, the bead and make this more round. You can see the profile there is more 90 now with little radius. But I'm going to run it with a different die, a different setup in the bead roller, so I can make this round now. And that's the last thing to do this before we start rolling this up with English wheel. So I pick dies that matching the radius of the original piece or the, the piece that I have made before. And I have the, the female die on the top and the male die on the bottom. So this is the profile I'm going to run. I thought that I could run it this way, switch this die around and run it this way, but then I interfered the flange with the die here. So I'm going to try a different thing here. So I'm going to run this one there. And from your view there, you can see what this looks like.
So I, I'm, I'm almost happy with it here, but it li I feel a little peak here. So I would like to adjust the dies a little more tighter together. It is a little too much gap between them. So I set them a little tighter and then I'm going to run it again. And that's what I like with my bead roller is that I can adjust the upper shaft so, so much. I'm going to start here because it was difficult to start in the beginning. So I'm going to start here and run it backwards. To get that first part there. Now I have a good start. Now I can continue the rest. So I think I'm close there with the radius now. I just need to shrink and this part here so this template that I had here will match. But I, I couldn't do that until I round this off. But I think I'm pretty close there with the profile here. So now I'm going to run this side. But as you see, it's interfered with the die here. So I need to move the camera around so you can see it from the other side. So I moved everything around, so now I can feed it in from this side. And I think I'm going to set this one there and go backwards first so I get the first part there. There you go. Now I can stand behind the panel and feed it that way. Here will be the tricky part because this one I haven't done this way before. So this is this is new for me too. So if I screw this up, which I can see that I almost doing now. So because now you can see that the bead roller, the panel curves down and it touching here, touching the frame. So I can't continue here now. So what I need to do now is I need to open this up. And I need to flip this die around so I can run it from this side because now the flange is less here. So now it doesn't interfere with the bottom die there. So let's do that. As you can see now is that I have moved the die, flipped the die around so I have the shoulders on the inside now. Because of this flange, the flange is narrow now compared to here. It doesn't interfere with that. I don't think so. If it does, I need to adjust that with a hammer and dolly later, but I think it will be okay. So now I can start there where, where, I, where I started the last time. And then I can run it like this. Hope it says close up enough, close if close up enough so you can see it. So there you can see the result, but the whole purpose of doing this is now this radius here is round instead of 90 degrees sharp. I can always go in and do little adjustments with a hammer and a dolly. Let me check in the die. I think I can set the dies a little bit more tighter together. Maybe I can get a little better round profile of the edge of the flange there. So I adjusted the shaft in and out. So you see it's very convenient, easy to change the setup because I can adjust the shaft so quick. So 
So that's what it looks like now. Let's go over to the sandbag and the hammer and the dolly and do little small adjustments and then I can shrink this part there and then we can take a look at it what it looks like. I like the sandbag as a working table where I can put the panel and I can use uh, any kind of, of dollies. Now I would like to hammer the flames a little bit more 90 degrees. So I think I'm going to use a different, different hammer that have a little radius on the surface here so I can hammer that in there. That one doesn't work. So I'm using this dolly. little tweak here and there and if I feel a little mark there after the the bead roller dies I can just take the angle grinder and smooth that out a little little bit I have a little little damage down here so this one this one I hammer from the inside I think I, it's close enough to... Close enough now, if I want to go with a flap disc in the angle grinder, I can, I can do that and take out a few small, uh, small uh, marks. So let's go over to the table and check this template and see what that says. So I'm over here at the table and if I put this template over here where it should be, you see I haven't done any adjustments at all and it fits there. But the thing is that I'm about a half inch too low. So the template should be there. So something going on that probably need to stretch it a little bit here and then shrink it maybe a little bit more here. So I need to go over to the, to the shrink and stretch and see if I can adjust that. Uh, if, I, if I can get it close, then I can take the rest with the English wheel to get the number two and number one template there because I need a little more convex shape there. So let's go over to the shrink and see if I can at least get it get a little closer. So what I need to do to adjust this so the template fits is I need to stretch it a little bit here and a little bit down here and then I need to shrink it more in the middle there. So I start with a stretcher. And then I'm stretching it a little bit here. And we're talking about small, small things now. So I did very, very little. So let's check the template, see if, if something changed. It didn't change much there. So that tells me that I probably need to roll that up with English wheel.
But before that, I will shrink it a little bit there. So let's go over to the shrinker. So I'm over to the other side and I'm going to shrink it a little bit here. So you can actually see how, how quick it moves. So I think if what would happen if I go back to the English wheel and roll up number one and two in this area, in this area, then the template will come out a little bit. And if it comes out, it's go away from that. So it's lining up to the line there. So that's my thing to do now. I'm over to the English wheel and I'm using the flat one on the bottom because I'm going to roll it this way. And that's why, you know, I can use the flat one if I'm rolling it this way. If I'm rolling it this way, I can't use the flat one because it's going to destroy the panel and it's going to be big marks from the edges. So I can't do that. But for now, if I'm rolling it this way, I can I can roll it this way. So you see, I'm already only ro rolling this one. When I go back again, then I'm going to roll it a little further this way. can always blend it in my way but pretty soon here I'm going to touch the the bead that I had here so I can't go much further so now it will be shorter again so when I'm standing and rolling it in any panel in the English wheel my movements is there in my hands. I don't need to think about what I'm doing. I can just focus on the shape of the pen. And I can see when the, the convex shape coming up. So let's take a look at the template and see what the, what the template says now. So now you can see that I'm closing to the red line there now with the template. And that's where I want it to be. Because the template was made with it about a little more than an inch extra there. So now we are very close there. Now I just need to, to make sure that I don't get any other marks. Here you can see some dings. And it was a dirt on the English wheel. Came from the rubber band. So those marks, I need to grind that or, or yes, uh, grind that off. I do have a little stop marks here. So I would like to go over to, I can use this English wheel actually. I can take the second wheel and I can roll this one up and down a few passes to just blend that. Get rid of those marks. I think it is it is very close. So let's uh, um, go over to the table and check number one and two template and see where we are there but we definitely have a curve this way now and that's what we want so check this template now this template is on the red line or a little past the red line but that is one sixteen of an inch so that's nothing so i'm happy with that template that is for me that is close enough then we have number two and number two is okay. And number one. 
is a little, little bit gap there, but I'm not worried about that because this is going to be welded in. So this edge is going to be welded anyway. So the, we, you can correct that if, if when it's time to do that. So for me, that is close enough there now. So I think that's, that's it. It worked out good. I um, I never done this, and I'm always a little a little afraid of that. If I if I screw this up when I'm filming it, it's like well oh, that I need to start over again with a new piece to get to the same point. But it came out nice, so I'm happy with it. It definitely can be a piece that can be used. So that was the second part for the cab corner and we will see what I figured out for the next video. If you like my video here and, and you're learning from it and remember that it's not magic at all. If you follow my instructions, you're going to get the same result. If you don't follow my instructions, you're going to get this different result. So if you want to see more videos, go to www.artbylassie.shop. There you can find merchandise, t-shirts, uh, coffee mugs, and all kinds of different stuff. Uh, if you want more information about my classes, my equipment, uh, you can go to www.lassiemetalshaping.com. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Have a good day. Bye.